have nothing against China. I just hate that their leaders are so much smarter than our leaders. 2016, we will not be the world leader anymore. We have been always. What will but in 2016, 2016 we will China becomes the great economic leader. E even, even if Mitt Romney is elected, he says that he Maybe will. you can turn it around. Well, do you think he can turn it around? I think we can. Do you think Mitt Romney can I turn think, it around? I think he can. As a line of clothing. Now, where were these made? These were made, I don't know where they were made, but they were made someplace. But they're great. It's ties, shirts, cufflinks, everything sold at Macy's, and they're doing great. Number one selling tie anywhere in the world. Number one selling I, I don't know, tie I anywhere in the world. Wear that well, shirt, you wouldn't wear that we shirt? We also have them in white and beautiful where, white. Where are the shirts made? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Well, it's good. Okay. We employ people in Bangladesh. That's ties? Great. Where are the ties they made? These are too. beautiful ties. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? China. Ties are made in China. I'll tell you, and, and you know what, David, in all fairness, I've been very open about that, and not all of them, by the way, but I've been very open about that. Are you okay? Is the ch the no, chair I'm was fine. Made I just, China. yeah, I know. Chair was <laughs> the made chair China. was made in China. You, you buy let's that just, at Macy's, by the way. Let's just, let's just, let's just get, uh, uh, shut down the uh, Donald Trump factory in Beijing. I would love to. And, and we'll put up a tie factory in uh, Jamaica, Queens. I love it. And we'll make, we'll make the Donald it. Trump ties here. I'm for it. On Friday, January 27, 2017, President Trump issued an executive order suspending the Syrian refugee program and temporarily banning entries for people coming in from Iraq, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Yemen, and Syria. The backlash has been fierce, and public figures from around the world have voiced their outrage. On one hand, this is understandable, given the humanitarian implications. However, one has to ask, where was this outrage when the refugee crisis was being created? Where was the righteous indignation in 2011 when the Obama administration toppled the Libyan government? First by sending in the CIA to back rebel groups, that ended up having direct ties to Al-Qaeda, and then using airstrikes to finish the job. Prior to this intervention, Libya had one of the highest standards of living of any country in Africa. They even had free health care. Today the country is a failed state, plagued by ongoing violence. That's why these people are trying to escape. And where was the righteous indignation in 2012? when the U.S. began providing weapons, money, and training to rebel groups in Syria in an attempt to overthrow Assad. Even at the time, it was known that most of these weapons were ending up in the hands of jihadists. And it was no secret that these groups were committing horrific atrocities. Again, why do you think these people are trying to escape? And then there was Yemen, where the Obama administration quietly supported Saudi Arabia's bombing campaign for over a year before finally getting their hands dirty and launching direct airstrikes in 2016. This warmongering continued till the very end. Here's a map of where the 26,171,000 bombs Obama dropped in just the last year of office fell. You know, it seems to me that the inhabitants of these countries would have preferred that you stand up against the wars that destroyed their homeland before and while it was happening, rather than take issue of where they are allowed to go in the aftermath. Just saying. None of this is a defense of Trump's order. It doesn't make any sense that Iran be included on the list while Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Egypt get a free pass, especially considering that Saudi Arabia is the most prolific purveyor of Wahhabi extremism in the world. Unless, of course, you look at this through a geopolitical lens, which brings us back to the real crux of the issue, war. After eight years of covering for Obama's foreign policy, the left already has a credibility problem. And the current strategy of throwing temper tantrums at Trump's each and every turn, which started before he took office, isn't helping. Inside your echo chamber, you might feel like revolutionaries. But from the outside, your selective outrage reeks of hypocrisy and lowbrow partisanship. You're also burning through your ammunition before the battles that are really going to count, like another war or an expansion of police state powers. Make no mistake, Trump is just getting warmed up. Break the echo chamber. Share this with someone who needs to hear it, or with someone you think might already get it. This video is Creative Commons. You have permission to download, copy, and distribute it by any means. If you'd like to support our work, you can donate at stormcloudsgathering.com forward slash donate. You can find the transcript, sources, and original video at stormcloudsgathering.com at the link below. For more, subscribe to Stormclouds Gathering on YouTube and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+.